Hi, I'm Bo Crane, the secretary of the Menlo Park Historical Association. And this is a Victorian's Day video being produced for the uh, County of San Mateo Historical Association and Museum. It's being shot by John Crane, my brother. Thank you, John. Uh, we're standing in front of the St. Patrick of Seminary and College. This is one of five locations we'll be shooting today. St. Patrick's is on land that once belonged to Kate Johnson. And Kate Johnson was the daughter-in-law of George Johnson who once owned property all over Menlo Park. In fact, the two Irishmen who named Menlo Park Ranch uh, acquired land from Johnson, who was a Norwegian sea captain, made his money in hardware in San Francisco, sewing hardware. So the two Irishmen uh, purchased the property, the ranch on El Camino, which was then known as County Road. They named the, uh, one of the Irishmen named the property Menlo for a village that was near his home in Galway and became the Menlo Park Ranch. It had a sign over it. When the train finally came through, they named their train stop Menlo Park after the sign that said Menlo Park for the ranch. But that was in 1863. The Irishman had left the property. They turned the mortgage back over to Johnson in 1855, and they went back to, to San Francisco. They hoped it had been a real estate venture, but without the train coming through, there was no money in it. Johnson held on to the land. When he died, and when his son died, Kate Johnson inherited the property. She had come from Indiana. She'd been a Presbyterian. But while she was out here, she made uh, friends with a priest, uh, Patrick Reardon. When uh, she passed away, she donated her land to the Catholic Church, and she became the largest landowner in California to donate to the Catholic Church. Uh, Patrick Reardon uh, established the St. Patrick's Seminary and College in 1898. Uh, the building was built. His first name is Patrick, and of course, but his name St. Patrick's after the patron saint of Ireland. It was uh, the building, as you can see, is, is huge. It was partially destroyed in 1906 by the earthquake, and over the over the door at the top. It says rebuilt 1908. It took them a couple years to, to rebuild it. Right now, there are about 70 students. The uh, college is accredited. Uh, they have a few degrees that people can get, including a, a Master of Arts, uh, a, bachelor, uh, a Bachelor degree, and a, a degree in theology, all, all religious related. We're going to be visiting four other religious sites today, and it's not so much the religion as it is the uh, these sites are all involved in the history of Menlo Park. Kate Johnson had her mansion here. She named it Heart's Ease. It burned in 1909, and the uh, and it's no longer here. The seminary you can see is huge, and it's Menlo Park's only school of higher learning. When you consider that M MA High School is in Atherton, right across the city limit, and Menlo College and School is also in Atherton. So this is it. Few people know it's here. Few ever come down the driveway. Right now with the COVID-19 crisis, now the driveway is off limits, but we've come here today to shoot this video. And we'll move on to the other four sites. All right, this is the rear of the Church of the Nativity. The reason why we're at the rear is that it's a little noisy on Oak Grove, but also I think this is the way the church may have looked. It was first built in 1872, and it was, the, uh, it was based from the Diocese of San Mateo, where the uh, train had finally reached in 1863. The decision was made to establish the second church. St. Matthew's had been established in San Mateo and a second church here in 1872. The church was meant to serve Palo Alto, which was then Mayfield. Palo Alto had not been created yet. Menlo Park, Atherton, which was part of Menlo Park, Redwood City, and Mountain View. 
The church had been created, uh, like I said, in 1872 on the corner of Ringwood and Middlefield. It was called St. Bridget. Bridget, St. Bridget is one of Ireland's patron saints. It was also the name of the wife of Dennis Martin. We'll get to Dennis Martin later. The church was on, uh, like I say, on the land of Ringwood. The property had been put up for collateral on a loan based on wheat speculation. When the speculation fell through, uh, James Flood collected on the note. He acquired the land and he didn't want the church there. So it was put on log rollers and moved to downtown Menlo Park, which wasn't really a downtown then, but it was the area close to the train station on Santa Cruz Avenue. It was actually parked next to the uh, Presbyterian Church. The, uh, a year later, that was in 1878, a year later, Joseph Donahoe, Donated this property for the uh, for the Church of the Nativity. Hi. Hi, are you connected with the Church of the Nativity? Faster. Faster. Well, we're doing a video for the San Mateo County uh, M Museum, right. and I was wondering if this was the original front of the church. No, because no. the church was 40 by 55. It wasn't very big. Yeah, you can see on the inside. You can see where the seam and the where they join. Is. Yeah. So the, this this the, was added, and the wings were added, and the tower was added. So yeah. The original church is really pretty small. Yeah, well, actually, they had forty by fifty-five, yeah. and, and it was called the it was called the Roman Catholic Church because it roamed over town until until right. it wound up here. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you for uh, thanks thank for your sharing that. Making a cameo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we thought this might happen, so we were all prepared for it. <laughs> thank Take you. Care. Thank you. Well, that's the story. We'll go to the front and we'll see the original front. But the uh, uh, Donahue gave the property for the church and it was moved here in uh, 1879. Uh, and then the steeple was added, like the Mon Senior said. And it's, uh, it's, it's one of Menlo Park's most popular Catholic churches. We're at Corpus Christi Monastery on Oak Grove. The Church of Nativity was also on Oak Grove. Oak Grove is known as Menlo Park's Religious Row. Across the street is the Vallambrosa Catholic Center. And I'd like to point out that the, oak, the oaks were sacred to the Druids. So oak trees and religion go way back. The, uh, this is a, uh, the monastery is owned by the Dominican Sisters. That was an order that was founded in 1200. Well, St. Dominic founded his order in 1200. They were in Europe, but in 1880, uh, St. Dominic's located in New Jersey, later to the Bronx. In 1921, a group of five nuns, uh, along with three other uh, sisters in training, took the train to Oakland, California. They located in Alameda, then San Rafael, then finally on San in San Francisco on Eddy Street. But that proved too small, and the church acquired land here, or the Dominican uh, Society acquired, acquired land here from Mary Lynch O'Keefe. Mary's father had uh, run a nursery here. His name was Michael. He was born in Ireland. He, uh, immigrated to the United States. He, he learned his trade in the botan botanical gardens of London, worked his way, got married, came to California, began working for James Flood, who I uh, remember Flood was connected with the Nativity Church, and, and the Flood estate, Linden Towers, is also on Millfield Road close by. He then went to work for Mary uh, Sherwood Hopkins, the widow of Mark Hopkins, and he was the gardener over the uh, Sherwood estate. Mary gave the property to her adopted son, Timothy. And when Timothy established a nursery, he hired Michael Lynch. When Hopkins got out of it, when Timothy Hopkins got out of the nursery, Lynch uh, started his own, prop his own nursery here. He was quite well known. He was known for the quality of his flowers. He shipped flowers all over the West, Denver, Salt Lake, Los Angeles, 
Uh, when he died in 1905, Mary acquired the property. Now she sold the property to the Dominicans in 1927. They began building. She actually died that December. The, uh, at one point, the, uh, the monastery had uh, 50 nuns at its highest point. Now some people might think, well, why, why not a convent? This is a monastery, as Sister Marie Christine explained to me, it's a monastery because it's a monastic life. And the nuns are cloistered for their, all their life. They do get to see their family members. And then uh, Marie Christine, the, the, head, um, the head nun, I, I don't know other word, she, uh, she also is the face for the public. They used to have uh, the cows here, sheep, uh, and raise their own food. I don't believe they do that anymore. There's 10 nuns, 10, uh, uh, 10 nuns, and there's others who are training and thinking about joining the, uh, the monastery. Well, you might notice that this is a different kind of church. This is a Russian Orthodox church. It's a church of the Nativity of the Holy Virgin. But it started off as an Episcopal church in 1886. The, uh, it was the first Episcopal church in the area before anybody who was not going to Catholic Church went to the Presbyterian Church in downtown Menlo Park, and that included the Stanfords, Leland and Jane Stanford, who came to the area in 1876. Presbyterian Church was built in 1875, and they had to wait about 10 years before this church was built. The original location was on Ensno Avenue in Menlo Park on the other side of the, the railroad tracks, and it was attended by uh, Leland Stanford, who then was serving as a U.S. Senator, and also Charles Norton Felton, who was a, also, also a U.S. Senator. So they both were in the same church across the aisle from one another, as the story goes, uh, until 1893, when uh, Stanford died and then Norton did not run for re-election. He'd been serving the, the term of uh, George Hurst, who died in office. So it was an Episcopal church, it was later moved to Oak Grove, another church that got, got moved around. The Trinity, it was called the Holy Trinity Church, it grew and they had to build a, a new church. The chapel was too small. But in 1950, a group of Russians who had left, um, who had long ago fled Bolshevik Russia, uh, came out to this area and they began using the chapel for their own worship. The church allowed them to do that. They paid, I think, $25 a year to be able to use the, the chapel. Uh, one of the primary uh, persons who organized the Russian church was Vasily Alexandrovich Romanov, who was a uh, part of the Romanov family. He was a great-great-grandson of Nicholas I, and his maternal uncle was Nicholas II. There's a lot of separation between those two. So he was part of the uh, royal family of Russia. He came out here. He later uh, located to Woodside, where he was well known. He passed away in the 1980s. So the Russians were having their services in the chapel. Um, this, was, this was actually in the uh, late 1950s. In 1950, I myself was baptized in this uh, in the chapel when it was Episcopal Church. In 1957, the Russians uh, made an agreement with the, uh, the Episcopal Church to purchase the chapel for a dollar, I believe, and they, uh, the deal was they had to move it to this location. They had to pay for the moving expenses. So once again, the church got moved. It was put on a flatbed truck, taken across the tracks, and deposited here. And the difference between my photos of the church back then and now is that when I, in 1950, the oak tree was in the center. Now the oak tree is on the right. Looking at the pictures, you think the tree was moved, but no, there's two different chapels. This, uh, this chapel, they have a, a, a Christmas event every December, the first uh, Saturday in December. And we've gotten to know Father Andrew Smith, who is the Russian priest, uh, in, currently in charge of the, the church. Hi, we're at St. Dennis in West Menlo. 
This is a painting by Rachel Bentley of the actual St. Dennis Church, which was founded by Dennis Martin in the hills of, uh, off Sand Hill, which was then the, the Mayfield Searsville, Searsville Road, near what is now Jasper Ridge, a biological preserve owned by, uh, currently owned by Stanford. But at one point, at the base of the ridge, it was a ranch owned by Dennis Martin. I'll say a few words about Dennis Martin. He came to California in 1844, part of a wagon train of several immigrants, including um, uh, Irish, uh, some Irish families, one of which had married his sister. So he came with his sister, his brother, and his father. They came uh, from Missouri in 1844, the first wagon train to actually get their wagons over the Sierra. They were two years ahead of the, the Donner Party. And Martin uh, went to work for John Sutter, got sent to the Bay Area to cut some redwoods and uh, to learn that there were not only redwoods in Oakland, but there were some here in Woodside. He bought his ranch land from another Irishman, John Coppinger, who had been granted a Kenyatta, the Kenyatta de Raimundo, but Kenyatta means valley. So Coppinger thought he had the entire Woodside area valley, and he sold part of it to Dennis Martin. It's where Sand Hill and Whiskey Hill Road uh, roads are today. Martin uh, created a ranch. He bought um, a, a timberland higher up in the in the mountains. Got into the uh, the timber business. Uh, had two sawmills. He was the largest employer in San Mateo County. He had a schooner in Redwood City, a warehouse. Whiskey Hill Road was called Martin Road at the time, and he would take his lumber there to the port of Redwood City, ship to San Francisco. The, uh, but unfortunately, the lumber market began to uh, soften uh, due to the fact that it was post gold rush and not all the new money was coming in. But Martin had a, a bigger problem. In verifying the land grants, the, the uh, U.S. surveyor had determined that a valley, by definition of survey, uh, survey language, was a valley floor. So the Kenyatta, and we all know Kenyatta Road, was the valley floor. And he determined that the floor, he determined by the, the creeks, uh, the creek line running north-south. And it turns out Kenyatta Road is actually on the east side of the, the creek line. So he, the survey determined that that property actually belonged to the Pulgas Rancho. Everybody knows Alameda de los Pulgas, and it's actually not far from, from here at St. Dennis. He determined that the family that owned the Pulgas Rancho had the property from the bay to what's known as Bear Goats Creek. You can think in terms of Whiskey Hill Road. And Martin's property lay outside of that. So Martin lost his, his ranch. And without the ranch, he was unable to uh, mortgage property to buy more timberland. The market had softened anyway. He had some other property that he began mortgaging, mortgaging, trying to stay afloat. He wasn't able to. He went, uh, he went, wound up going bankrupt and uh, moving to San Francisco where he works as a laborer, died in 1890. The church that he established uh, was abandoned when he left the, the property. In 1863, and this church was actually established in 1853, his Cemetery was established in 1856 when his brother died being uh, kicked in the head by a horse. So uh, Martin, uh, the surveyor, the survey was done in 1856, denied him his land, he tried to hang on, he left. The train had come through in 1863, and that's when, from what we've already said, uh, St. Matthew's was established in San Mateo, Bishop Albany, who did not like Coming out here in the buckboard, he went. Uh, uh, he was the uh, the Archbishop in charge of Missions Dolores. He would go to Mission San Clara and occasionally come here. The uh, with the train stop, the church became abandoned. Martin was evicted off his own property. The church lay in ruin until uh, 1899, when it was on Stanford property and it was torn down because it was seen as a hazard. 
the, uh, the, the church in Menlo Park at the time was Church of the Nativity that we visited earlier. And that's where Martin's candlesticks and his altar, uh, his altar crucifix wound up. The, uh, in 1962, uh, the Catholic Church got word that, that uh, Stanford was going to create a thousand houses in the area and they established a, the church here. At the groundbreaking was the great granddaughter of Dennis Martin. She put the first shovel in the ground. The, uh, the, ho the housing never happened uh, due to the fact that Stanford created the linear accelerator. That's a two mile shed where they, uh, they collided atomic uh, par uh, particles. The, uh, there is a Stanford subdivision, Stanford Hills, but it only has 80 houses. So, so St. Dennis, they kept the name of, uh, uh, that Martin had used for his church. That was his own personal saint. And they kept the name, and it's actually in French, it's Denis. So St. Denis is the, is the church here. The bell that, was, that Martin had uh, used in his church, one of the two bells, is located here. And we're going to go over and uh, we're, going to, we're going to see the bell um, that is from the 1853 Dennis Martin Church. And this is one of the two bells that was in the original Dennis Martin Church. <coughs> oh. Still works. <laughs>